I leaned back into the cover as I whispered the words over into the radio set. Sitting in the snow at a height of 5,000 meters, I looked at Bravo a few feet away, sitting calmly under a ledge. Despite the high winds, which had already started off a little snowstorm. Here was this one man who would not hesitate to pull me out of danger, even if it meant laying down his own life. A mountaineer par excellence who not only possessed superhuman climbing skills, but had intricate knowledge of the terrain as well. Bravo's face had the same smile, regardless of the intensity of the situation. But I knew something more, which not many did. There was a streak of anguish hidden in that smile. That one little nuance, which could be a matter of life or death in a totally different scenario. The call I had just received shook me and put me in a dilemma. While nuanced, here's the simple version. Jeopardizing the success of the mission versus thinking about an individual. And I had to decide in the next few minutes. Well, before I talk about my dilemma of that moment, let me tell you how we reached where we did. And for those of you who have seen Jeet Ki Zid already, Please know that this is not one of the scenes from the show. It probably would have been too difficult to capture it on celluloid anyway. For those who do not know what I'm talking about right now, here is my life in a nutshell. Special Forces officer got shot in combat with a few bullets in the stomach, recovered, went back into combat, got shot again, but after the second injury, I was told that I would never walk again. Which meant that while I could still continue to serve in the army, but would not be able to go back to my beloved team full of bravos. So I took a decision. I leave the armed forces. Lying in the hospital bed knowing fully well that I'll not walk on my feet again, I had decided to chart a new path for myself. It was not that the armed forces wanted me to leave. And imagine that, leaving a well-established career with complete job security. I was leaving all that for an uncertain world which I had no familiarity with. What kind of a decision was that? Emotional? Yes. Foolish? Maybe. My reasoning was simple. If I couldn't go back to my own unit, my team of special forces, I'll leave the armed forces. Today, I'll talk about such emotional decisions and the reasoning for such decisions. So back to my tryst with valiant soldier Bravo. That time, we were on a very critical mission in the snowy peaks. Bravo was the radio signal of my ace climber, the lead rope. For this operation, we had chosen the most difficult route to surprise and attack the enemy sitting on top of the mountain. A lot of hopes were pinned on our operation. And my hopes, they were pinned on Bravo. He was responsible for traversing the steep climb on ice, fix ropes, so that the rest of the team could reach the top, which was more than 5,000 meters above sea level. Just to set the context, Everest Base Camp is at 5,300 meters. The difference here was that we were all carrying loaded weapons and battle loads on our back. We had no Sherpas, no oxygen cylinders, no prefixed ladders and ropes. We just had one thing going in our favor. We were a team full of soldiers like Bravo. On the other hand, 
what we had was a super alert enemy expecting an attack any day so we had to lie down covered in white poncho during daylight and could only move under the cover of darkness using a very unorthodox approach for our attack due to the degree of difficulty and sheer incline it was almost an unimaginable approach which we were sure of and we were sure that the enemy would never expect the attack from that direction that also meant that we could only traverse a max of 100 to 150 meters vertical elevation each night now talking about the climbing process here is how it all works the lead climber hits one ice axe slightly above the shoulder height than the other ice axe and then uses both arms to support the body weight while using one leg at a time to move up using the crampons and then fixes the ice pitons or the ice screws now typically we have two lead climbers who keep alternating the reason is that the blood flow in your arms it stops and they go numb after some time due to thin air with lesser oxygen the body works at only a fraction of actual strength each step up is an effort in itself to compare the effort every step you climb using this technique you are spending energy equivalent to 15 minutes of shoveling in your own garden now imagine that effort when you are carrying a loaded weapon and battle load of more than 30 kg on your back and move of this whole team depends on fixing of that rope by the lead climber as they you the team uses this rope to climb this is an oversimplified version of ice wall climbing but i guess it's good enough to understand the context we had been climbing for 3 nights and the plan was to negotiate the rest of the climb in two more nights and surprise the enemy in such a way that they don't know what hit them in such cases typical firefight lasts for just a few minutes to a max of couple of hours but the preparation and grueling climb it takes many weeks and sometimes months of effort as the whole focus is to be able to surprise the enemy the vertical climb left now was just 195 meters but that was the steepest part and closest to the enemy it was on the fourth evening i got the radio message about bravo typically we not only know about the skills of these soldiers we know the soldiers better than probably their own family members you have to our lives they depend on the action of each of the team member understanding each other's personal motivation is extremely important so bravo's personal story goes like this in his late 30s an ideal son and a husband he was very well respected back in his village but he had one big regret in his life he did not have a child in fact his wife had conceived a couple of times but due to medical issues the child had to be aborted and the second time his wife's life was also in danger bravo was one of the most motivated soldier and was generally happy except this one fact his only regret in life the missing child sitting at 5000 meters above sea level on that evening the message i got on radio was that bravo's wife was expecting again while i had a few moments of dilemma i took a decision bravo was to be assigned a buddy and he would go back to travel back to where his family was slithering back to the base was a matter of hours with the, all these ropes which were fixed mostly by bravo we were on a tough mission we were left with a climb of two more nights and then we knew there would be a firefight it was one of those missions where all of us all 20 of us had left our last letters addressed to our families we left those letters at the base just in case we did not return alive 
while I was aware of the critical role Bravo was playing, I knew that I'll be able to manage with 18 men and Bravo needed to be with his wife. That was more critical. When I mentioned this to Bravo, he broke down. It was already dusk and we were about to move for the night. Every minute was precious. But I sat down with Bravo. He was inconsolable. And I started trying to. And here's how the conversation went. Sir, I joined your team as the lead climber so that I could take part in this operation. Now you are asking me to go back? It's okay, Bravo. You've done your bit and every day is important when it comes to taking care of your wife at this time. Sir, it's the last 195 meters and we'll easily do it in two nights. I know that and all the work done by you will ensure that we do it. And trying to change the topic, I said, you have yet to take your annual leave as well. Sir, so, annual leave is the last thing I think of at such times. And earlier today, Alpha, the other lead climber told me he had started developing blisters. And I promised him that I'll lead the rest of the way. I can't leave him like that. And this is my regiment's pride. Why are you sending me back? Now, while Alpha's blisters was news to me, being close to both of us, he joined our conversation. And when Alpha tried to talk about Bravo's kid and Bravo just exploded. Let me tell you the exact hard-hitting words which Bravo uttered. Agar mera bachcha bhi ho gaya, तो उसे क्या मुंह दिखाऊंगा? Roughly translated to, even if I have a child now, what will I tell her? Will I say that I left the team at the most critical juncture? It took Alpha and myself almost an hour of convincing till Bravo could be sent back. And two things happened. One, Bravo reached home and his wife delivered a beautiful baby. Second, I learned important life lessons. The camaraderie in the team defined its success or failure. Bravo was worried about Alpha more than his own life. Remember, this was a critical and dangerous mission. He wanted to be with his own team, despite the news about his own family the only regret he ever had in his life. Bravo, he was not an exception. He was the rule for the team. This is the story of all the soldiers in the team. And when you work with such giants, how could you work with anyone else in similar settings? So questions for you ladies and gentlemen are, what makes people take emotional decisions like leaving a well-established career for unknown? What makes people like Bravo risk their own life for a cause as nebulous as patriotism? What makes people like Bravo put the team and buddy's interest before self? But personally for me, there are no questions only fortunate experiences and hope. Experiences of being in the elite company of soldiers like Bravo, which give me the strength to take emotional decisions like the one I did and to persevere thereafter. And hope, hope that we will have many more Bravos who would soldier through their life the way Bravo did give their best self in the last 195 meters. Thank you.